Okay, fine. I don't care. Uh, let's move back. Yes. Ah, uh, I forgot which was the herb for meditating. Could have just never told me. Problem is, there's so much information on this game going on, I can't remember anything. Transversalis Teleport. Yep. Uh, better not. I want to, you know, hmm? cast movement. Uh, Whoa! Speedy Gonzales! Why are you so fast? Huh, oh well. Let's hope nothing bad appears, like vampire lords or whatever. Would totally suck. You, I want to enter the town. Okay, since I highly doubt that any shop is open, we will rent a room, sleep for two days, and eat something. Twenty-two hours. We, we can go to a bar. Let's have let's have some drink. I think that's, that's something we could use now after all this fighting. Hmm. Suddenly, something hits a away forcefully from the side, and a heavy weight drops on his shoulder. Where you where you are going? Towards a deep voice. And then the way he decides to be polite and takes a step aside. And there's a dull splat when the sailor, suddenly deprived of his support, falls flat on his face. The drunkard says something unintelligible, then he rolls over and falls fast asleep in the middle of the road. Do we really want to have a drink? <laughs> Wasn't there something about this tower being cursed? The tower has a large doorway, but that appears to have been walled up years ago. You notice some bad window first up. I don't see any ghosts, Elanaway complains, as if on a cue a small light suddenly appears right in front of you. A strange fog billows up around it and slowly condenses to something remotely man-like in shape. Elanaway takes two steps back in shock. You shouldn't... You shouldn't say things like that. The apparition mumbles reprovingly. Elanaway pales. Several wrongs I committed, the ghost declares in a pompous voice, and bound to this place, therefore am I, to appear for every night thereafter. Suspiciously, Elanaway shoots a look at Victorian Robot, but Victorian Robot 2 has lost a healthy color, has drawn back, and stares at the apparition in terror. Do you want to cast a spell? Yes. Lady Gilvan. Demonology banished spirits. The apparition gives a painful mourn, the fog starts to flow apart, the light burns brightly, then the figure reforms. Lady Gilvan is caught by an invisible power for a few seconds and shakes about somewhat fiercely, then it's over. You shouldn't do things like that, the apparition mumbles approvingly. Slowly the fog dissipates, the light fades away, and everything returns to normal. Uh, excuse me for a second, says Morak Dice, disappears into a dark corner and relieves himself. Oh boy. Morak Dice has only just pulled his pants back up when he hears something motionless. Morak Dice stops to listen. A dark human shadow passes by close to his hiding place, laughing softly. After a few steps, though, the figure stops suddenly and snaps his fingers, as if stuck, struck by a sudden inspiration. Seconds later, the street is empty again. Pensive, Morak dies, returns to his friends. A hidden figure who was sleeping. Interesting. Ah, <sighs> the harbor maid has plenty of customers. All tables are occupied, except a table where only one man is sitting. 
Obviously, he's not very popular. Do you want to... Oh, let's join the lonely looking fellow. Seeing you approach his table, the man looks up in obvious surprise. Mind if he join you? Of course not. There are enough chairs available, as you can see. By the way, my name's Tarik. I'm from Italy. <laughs> he shakes everybody's hand while Ellen Ray introduces you. What can you tell us about Riva? Do you know your way around this town? Why, certainly. After all, I've been living here for years. Maybe you can tell us a bit out of this place then? Well, Riva is the only harbor town of the Swirt League, as far as that still exists. After all, the orcs have nearly killed trade here. Many of Wait a sec, is the only harbor town? You can see the town in the intro. There was no water around there for miles. Ugh. Then again, yes, it is a harbor town, but still. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> after all, the orcs have nearly killed trade here. Many of the northern merchants seem just a step away from bankruptcy. But if you take a closer look, you see they're actually raking it in. Orcs? There's no doubt the Black Pants will be at the gates of Weaver someday if they aren't stopped. But it looks like they are planning to advance further inland first. Oh, the Arpians. Well, it seems a lot of citizens are afraid of an orc offensive against the Weaver and they're convinced the whole Berkians are somewhere in league with the Black Pants. A lot of citizens will believe the whole Berkians eat small children if only some loud mouth says it out loud enough. It's all just mindless blather. The whole Berkians are much too gentle for that. Well, well, I'm sure you've noticed I'm always on top of current events. Hopefully I've been able to help you, and I'm sure my knowledge could be worth your while in future too. So, if you need any more information someday, just get in touch. I live right next door. And don't forget to bring some change. That's interesting, and where do you get the information you sell? Tarek grins and shrugs. I know how to listen. Being in the right place at the right time is half the work already done. And then away looks around, the people in Tavern all keep a distance from the table. Apparently they aren't keen in contact with someone sitting there, either you or Tarek. This is a this at least doesn't seem to be the right place. I don't get the impression the people are lining up to provide you with news to sell. That's only those who have something to hide. And there's quite a lot of those as Anaway finds with a quick quick glance around. Be that as it may, Tarek seems well informed, and his services might indeed come in quite handy at some point. You should definitely, definitely keep it in mind. Take a look around the place, ask the people about the guild, the trade master, and the sewers. Oh. Okay. But first we want to... Six beer, please. Right away, Wolf says and walks over to the bar to get you your beer. Wait, a bit to eat. Not exactly a meal fit for king, but what do you do? It, it tastes good and is quite filling to boot. Morak dies. Dance for my amusement. Morak dies is a rowing success. They throw one Ducat. Yeah, and some change. Queen of Headless. Instrument. Oh, no one's carrying instrument. Oops. I guess making music with some instruments isn't that <laughs> interesting. Let's go with this. Oh well. I guess it will only be for this night, hopefully. We had some beer, we had some information. We visited. Oh. Hello, sailors. Wanna have a good time? No. Let me go back to the. Well, I guess only once on my night. I would like a sweet for three days. And I want to sleep for 20 hours. Yes. Let's see <coughs> if the apparition appears again. Elanaway has hardly touched the wall when the light appears again, once more surrounded by wisps of fog, slowly taking up human shape. What do you want? A voice mumbles apparently from the middle of the fog. 
for a second Morak dies get the impression that the voice is coming from a totally different direction, but he can't see anything there. Who are you? asks Morak dies. I am the, I mean I was Debel Sultan. Uh, mighty magician. Yes. What? <laughs> and what curse binds you to this place? Morak dies continues. I have brought upon myself severe guilt. The tomb of Lolgramos fell into the hands of an innocent man by my doing, and the archdemon won power over the unfortunate mortal. The apparition is silent for a long time, as if, as if waiting for another question. Then, when it is quite obvious that no one is forthcoming, the ghost continues. It happened long ago, but even now the curse may be lifted by sealing the tomb. Again the voice falls silent for a while. Today the tomb is in the hands of another innocent, who might fall to the demon at any time, should she open it at the wrong page. I know the voice sounds rather impatient, but Moraktais gives the author secret signs to keep quiet. Do you not want to help me? Uh, do you not want to help me lift this curse? <laughs> the apparition finally asks somewhat meekly. Moraktais at last is moved to answer. What would we have to do then? There are two artifacts that may counteract the power of the tomb. The right hands of a goblin. In general, goblin hands are considered good luck charms, but these two are cursed and have the exact opposite effect. They attract bad luck. The two talismans are in the hands of Muvat Velzelin and Charinje Almsjen. I can't speak these names. They both live somewhat north of the market square. We'll check out the situation first, Lord as decides. Afterwards, we'll, back, we'll be back to meet you. <laughs> that guy knows his way around town very well for a ghost. I don't like the smell of this, states Morak dies. When you are at some distance from the tower, we should definitely keep our eyes peeled. Hmm. Interesting. Can we now eat here again? Yes. Uh, no, I don't want to join him. I just want six beer. Ah, let's get smashed. Twelve beer. Everyone had three beer. One. Who falls over first? Four beers. Five beers. Oh, he threw us out. Sheesh, you guys had five beers. What the fuck? Nobody is smashed? I would be dead by now. <laughs> okay, fine. <clears throat> Let's sleep for uh, ten hours. The charisma has increased. Great. Okay, F1. No, wait, not F1. What was the journal? Diary. Mm, so they will have the informant and release the pretty No. Wait. What? The member is threatened to the guilt. He didn't tell us that. And why didn't you make notes about the names? Oh well, north of the market square. I'm pretty sure there are not that many houses over there. Hopefully. So, map. North of the market square. Okay, there's only these houses. Let's see. Hello! Aaron Rundolfsson. Hi! What can you tell me about Tarek? 
Do you know a man named Tarek? Yes, Tarek is one of our most important informers. Often enough, it was only due to him that we could prevent guild attacks. A pity we've been never been able to catch one of those terrorists. The guild? What a question! As captain of the guards, they are all I'm concerned with these days. Oh, you're the captain of the guards. They are slippery as eels, and we haven't a chance to catch them down in the sewers, where they spend most of the time. Just lately we try to get a scum when they leave the tunnels. Twenty men were laying in wait all day, but we didn't catch a single fellow on. I would bet someone tipped the guild off. Or my best. I don't really care for you and your tails. I want the guys with the talismans. Ah. Eleanor Way tells Charin here his ghost story and doesn't forget to mention your collective doubts about the whole affair. It sounds as like if someone is trying to get their hands on the goblin hands and the book. And then away concludes his speech. I really can't say that I've been particularly unlucky, says Charini afterwards. There have been no unusual occurrences over at Moberts either. At least none I, I know of. She thinks for a moment, wait here. Mobert lives nearby. I will go get him and we can debate what to do. It doesn't take long for Charinje to return with Mobert. After some debate, you all agree on a course of action. You will take the goblin hands and ask the soul in bondage for further instructions. After all, you need to get that demon book from somewhere and things will progress from there. Do I have the goblin hands now? Or? Dwight hands. Yeah. Tasty. Oh wait, we can actually go to the Fletcher and buy some bolts. See, only nine ducats for these bolts, and not 260 for a few uh, throwing stars. It's ridiculous. I need uh, 67 more bolts. 67. So, can we... Victorian robot can actually carry some heavy stuff now since she cannot get encumbered. Well, she can get encumbered, but... No, she can't. <laughs> Interesting. Uh... Because I kind of want you guys to have seven movement points if it's possible. Uh, dagger. Can I... Oh, yeah, good. Wonderful. Bye. Hello. Okay, we go back to our... Yes, we leave the Dwarf Mine for now, because I kind of want to solve this side quest. I can get distracted, leave me alone. Not to mention I kind of need to sleep, because with Golden Robot we really need some more magic points. It's 14 hours, so we sleep for 11. Oh wait, 10. 9. Yes. Ah, can't count anymore. So, then we go back to the tower. Spooky ghost story. This time it takes quite a while for the bound soul to appear. You have the hands, the apparitionist claims. Take them to Zila Horga at the south gate and explain the circumstances to her. She has the tomb. With that, the apparition is gone. Boy, that was fast this time. Morocco states with some surprise. <coughs> some women at the south gate. Let's see.
A handsome young man walks up to his almost floating movement.